Welcome to another edition of Regina District Industry Education Council Technology Spotlight. Today we have a very special guest, Mr. Dwayne Melcher. You may know him as Melcher Studios though. I know him as Melcher Media. How are you doing, Dwayne? Good, it's good. That's Matt. Thanks for coming out. Hey, thanks for having us. No uh, beautiful office. Now I gotta say, before we start this, you and I have, a, I, I was at a, a meeting in your office, probably, oh God, 12 years ago yeah. maybe? Yeah. Um, and so you were in the website industry far before we ever got into the industry. Yeah. And I always say what Melcher Media was doing was, to me, was very way, like several years down the road, what we were doing. And <clears throat> I, you still, to me, you took me under my wing. You still talk to me about what you're doing. We had a really cool meeting. Um, but ever since then, I've always had this like, we look up to you. And when you guys did VR, AR, that's when I was like, oh, well, yeah, you guys are the smart ones in the market. I'm like, you should be doing that. So this is cool. This is like fanboying over someone I've known in the market. Um, but a really cool, what you guys are doing now compared to what you've done. Like to me, you're one of the companies that have evolved. So maybe before I get too far into it, tell me about Vulture Studios. For sure, for sure. So yeah, that's a good question. So uh, we definitely had a, a lot of evolution as we've, uh, as we've progressed over the years. Um, so if I sort of start at the beginning, uh, you know, I had the idea of Melcher Media. As, as you and know, what as, year are we in right now? Yeah, so this is 2004. So 2004, I had the idea of Melcher Media and a lot of stuff I did on the side, you know, projects on my own, things like that. At the time, I was working for an ad agency. Um, and uh, then in 2007, I made the leap, went out on my own and I kind of did everything. So I did some uh, design work, some programming, uh, washed the dishes, that sort of thing. So client meetings, answered the phones. Uh, everything you can imagine and that was a lot of fun and then um, I started to get very busy which was great uh, good news at the time and then my first uh, employee came on board which be, then later became my business partner in my course so oh, cool. he came on say middle of 2008 is uh, is probably you hired him and then yeah hired him kind of thing oh, and then cool. uh, he you know he wanted in he liked what we were doing he liked where we were going so he, he became a partner he bought into the company at the time and in 2009 we incorporated and that time I think we had four or five staff so, so you were building, you were doing the stuff cut kind of off the side of your plate yeah. for years. Yeah, outside of my desk kind of thing. Cool. So, and then sort of uh, just, it just became too busy and, and things like that. And the ad agency was going in a different direction at the time. And um, I wanted to get more into the, the digital space, if you will, kind of yeah. my, my backgrounds in, in 3D and game design. So, um, so it was, it was, and at the time I talked to my wife, it was just me and her and she had a pretty secure job. So it was kind of like, well, let's give this a try. And if it didn't go well, you know, uh, I can always go back to, you know, somewhere else in, in the digital space. And, and, and so we yeah, have website development. I'm going to go back. And then 2007, I'm um, talking about what happened then the evolution of Melcher. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so the evolution of Melcher from that point forward is really focused on, if you want to think mini ad agency at the time. So yeah. we're doing graphic design, we did website design. We did a little bit of animation work. Um, and, um, you know, do a little bit of, uh, media buying, if you will, kind of thing. So, so it's sort of that mini boutique agency type, uh, were you taking what you'd learned from the previous agency yeah, and that's exactly. how you were yeah, some of that as well kind of thing was, was in sort of incorporated as well. Uh, at the time Mike had, a um, had a background sort of in the, in the media industry as well. And in the, um, in the web industry, but also, uh, more so in the photography industry, did a lot of photography work up at that time. So we sort of encompass all our skills we had from the start. So you guys had the best skill sets ever of a digital media company, really. Yeah, at the time, kind of thing. It definitely, it definitely. That's and that's where the synergy really worked for us to, to stay together. And work it together. makes so much sense now. Yeah, and then and then where things really started to extrapolate to get to where we were today, if you want to think about it, it actually did happen quite a few years ago. It happened in two thousand nine. In 2009, we took on our first um, big e-learning project. So we did a huge e-learning project for a company out of the U.S. actually. Um, and, and I can tell you the company is, and I'll tell you a little funny story about them. So it was actually for a makeup company, um, Elizabeth Arden. So, no <laughs> yeah. way. so at the time, I think there was four or five of us on staff and we were all, all males. So there was not a single female at the time on staff. 
So all of us guys are working on this e-learning project, teaching the salespeople in Elizabeth Arden uh, how to put makeup on females, uh, how to- Were you consulting with your wife constantly? Not me so much, Mike. It was kind of his forte. He was really into that. Uh, so but yes, definitely he was consulting with his wife. And Elizabeth I, Arden. Yeah, and I think he even got a whole bunch of free product and stuff. Like how did they find you? Um, the company we worked through was, a, was, a, was one of their bigger partners. Uh, they were actually um, uh, down east. Uh, I think they, at the time they were, I want to say, in New Jersey um, or around that part. They were somewhere in the, in the eastern northern U.S. kind of thing. So and they were just looking for digital media companies who could, uh, at the time, get really involved with multimedia. So really interactive learning kind of thing is what they're looking for at the time. This is 2009, remember? So a lot of flash-based stuff, animation. So we had the animation background. We were, they had the ability to incorporate 3D in the flash, things like that, that they were looking for. So that's sort of why we stood out. And they did a pilot project with us, uh, with us another very small company, it went really well. And then that's when they gave us this, this massive project. So cool. And that sort of like, you know, partook us to where we got today. Because at that time, what happened was, um, you know, we we're doing this e learning, we we're doing more, you know, interacting e with a lot of 3D. They hired some 3D folks kind of thing, um, some, some other programmers that were a little more diversified from web even at the time. So it was still, this is still early on. And another sort of, you know, if you want to call it junction in the company, if you will, so at that time, so from 2009 to about 2012, we were doing a ton more e-learning, interactive development, still continue to do some of the web stuff and that, but we were, you know, getting into that space quite heavily. Um, and um, at the time as well, it's still, you know, going back to what I went to school for, it was 3D animation and game design. So me and a couple of um, uh, friends, colleagues, uh, someone I went to school with, we got together and we actually formed a game company called Wicked Games. And the whole idea of Wicked Games is, again, it was another side of your desk project, but we uh, wanted to focus on building games for ourselves. That was a whole idea, right? And uh, there was sort of one person from each genre of business people, so I was sort of on the on the 3D side. Um, uh, there was another guy who was a modeler, there was a programmer, there was a marketing guy, uh, there was a lawyer for like legal and documentation, things like that. So and we were just building our own game, and that was happily going along. And then we actually got a bit of a, I want to say, I don't say a break, but sort of a, a change in the company. So we were approached by uh, an agency out of Winnipeg to produce because they, they liked what they were seeing. We were doing constant updates of the game we were building. They really loved it. And they wanted us to help build a, um, an iPad game uh, for their big client, which was Roundup Los Angeles at the time, I think. So, oh, wow. and you know, we looked at it and we're like, yeah, this would be a cool opportunity. So we built them sort of a knockoff Plants versus Zombies, but Weeds versus Roundup game uh, for their- <laughs> Very for, timely. Yeah, yeah at the that. time, yeah, kind of Plants versus Zombies came out very huge, so sort of a very timely manner. So we built that for them and, um, and that went really good and we got some more work for Wicked, but it ended up being client work. and. What ended up happening there was a lot of, about half the people in the company really wanted to build our own game. Um, they, they had other jobs, they were working full time. You know, one, one guy was a lawyer, for example, was really big into games. So he had a full time job. He wanted to build his own game. He wasn't looking to service other clients and make money, and that it wasn't his more of a hobby. Yeah, yeah exactly. Company. Exactly. It wasn't his forte. So we said at that point, you know, 2012, you want to fast forward. The learning on the military side is going really good. With the games sort of hit this crossroads. So. Everyone thought it was the best interest that we fold some of the te more technical people, so programmers, modelers, animation, into Melcher Studios at the time, or Melcher Media uh, at the time, kind of thing. So that's when sort of we we bought out Wicked Games, if you will, for lack of better terms. Those 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 uh, employees, I guess it would have been at the time, came over to uh, to Melcher, and that's when we really formed our you know game development division of Melcher, or interactive game development division of Melcher. So. so Talk, so you just out of the blue one day you're like we need wicked games so how do, how does that as an entrepreneur in the tech space how does that happen when you just say we're I'm sure it's a little more complicated than just saying it but that, that fascinates me and I think that's a really good lesson of this is how a lot of companies work yeah. it's not write the business plan look for funding and go yes it's, what do you care about well I want to build games well let's start a game company like, yeah talk to me about how that happened? Yeah, it was just yeah, it was an, an idea. It was it was something that was always sort of itching, uh, you know, kind of thing at us because um, you know that's what I went to school for. That was my passion. That was my dream. So um, so it was always there. It was always in the background. It was always sort of uh, subliminally around. And yeah, we just made the leap one day and just said, hey, let's do this kind of thing. So obviously, doing it on the side of your desk was a lot easier because 
you know, we all had other jobs, you know, mine was Melcher and other people had other, other jobs as well. So it was a lot easier to sort of, um, there's no pressure for sales. Yeah, no pressure for sales. And there's also the ability to, to add some money and some liquidity into it as well. We have to for some software, you know, the very first game tool that we used at the time was Unity and that was on its very infinite stages, right? I think it came out in 2007, if you want to say, where it became something that was able to be accessed over here. Um, don't quote me on that date, but, you know, so in 2009, 10, we're using, you know, Unity to develop this stuff kind of thing on its really early stages, right? Kind of so you fold the game department into yeah, Melcher sure. Studios. Yeah. 2012 and then at the time, you know, that's when we really, you know, we really could see the opportunity to get even more interactive, right? To really start to niche um, on, the, on the digital immersive space, if you will, right? Kind of thing. So, and at that time, you know, um, one of the people who came over from Wicked Games was Jack Hilkwich. He's our, he's a, he's a partner in the company as well, and he's our VP of Interactive. And he was really big into VR, kind of thing. So he really liked the idea of VR. It was just sort of being talked about. Um, you know, the, the Rift SDK kit had just come out, I think, the, you know, not to consumers, but to commercial use of that. Sorry, say that again. Riff. Uh, uh, the, uh, now you're talking Riff, too fast. Yeah, for me. sorry. Uh, Rift SDK. So the Oculus, uh, now known as oh. Oculus Rift, it was called Rift SDK at the time, came out on commercial use. So, so we said, yeah, that'd be pretty cool. So we we're always doing a lot of e learning, so a lot of training, and we we're already gamifying that. And we're like, hey, wouldn't this be cool to take all of our three D elements to the next level in VR? You seem like kids so, that never got out of like. Yeah. I'm like, this is my dream job. You yeah. get to play with VR. You get to make video games. Yeah. I'm like. This is the pathway you need to be taking in school. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, yeah. Sorry to cut you off. No, no, no. Really yeah. Cool. No, yeah. It's, it, it was a, it was a, it was a great. I mean, it was it was the right right choice, and we all felt like it was the way to go. So, so what we did is we um, we took on our first VR project. We got our, our commercial use of the uh, the Rift SDK, and for about a year, we programmed our first training warehouse training module, all kind of thing. So, at the time, then. Um, uh, the South Safety Council, uh, which is still around today, kind of thing. So they were actually a client of ours at, at Melcher. They said, hey, well, since you're getting really getting into this space, why don't you come to our trade show, uh, get a booth at our trade show. And we thought, yeah, that's a great way to get back at the time they were a client to and, and showcase our stuff. So we took our warehouse VR training and it was like a hit. Like people were lined up to use it. It was the hit of the show at the time. So All the it was people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So people, people were just like, Extremely amazed. They they were they were over the top. So, well, it's a part of it too. You're developing that here in Regina. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. cool. That's a cool story yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Kind of thing. So it's all developed here um, in, in Regina. Kind of thing. So, and uh, from there, basically, it started to really really propel kind of thing. Right, we really got into the VR space. We did a lot more VR training, augmented uh, reality training, or training. And then you know, fast forward maybe a few years to so 2017. Uh, about three years ago, I guess now, four years ago, I guess we're just in 2021. Um, we we'll did our first sort of, in December. yeah, exactly. <laughs> we did our uh, we did our first sort of you know 40 integration project. We call it peripheral, where we actually uh, you know started integrating uh, the hands-on stuff, right? So outside of the controllers that come with VR, um, and a good example would be like Minister High Rise doing their snowplow simulator training, where you put the VR headset on, but you have the full controls, throttle, joystick, steering wheel, gas pedals. All custom fabricated to, to mimic, for example, you know, the inside of the truck. So we still started getting into the, the the engineering side and the peripheral engineering side that, that integrates with VR, AR, and immersive. Was, was there a moment for you that VR took off, or, or you knew that this is going to be the next? Yeah, big thing? yeah, it was probably about 2015, 16. So probably a couple of years after, you know, even a year or two after the the trade show kind of thing is where it really because at that time too it was still hard to get a hold of headsets. Headsets were really expensive, um, so unless you were a really big company, it, it, it didn't make a lot of sense, or it was you know tough to. Well, simulators. Yeah, you know, I've heard like like into the hundreds of thousands. Yeah, of dollars. It, exactly like, right. So yeah, um, and you know, so th that really that really got us. Um, you know, just from the trade show, we understood that it was going there. It wasn't quite there yet, but yeah, a couple years later, definitely when when the first you know Oculus Rift came out, as you know it today, kind of thing. So something like this is the Quest, but. The Oculus Rift tethered, but the, the the standard headset as as sort of the industry knows it. When that became a consumer based model, is when we knew it was really gonna really gonna. Do work you have a favorite VR game, game that you've played? Ah, favorite. There's or the one you've developed. developed. There's I mean, been a lot. so <laughs> well, what we developed, we ended up developing the the Sharknado VR game for for our local producer here. And that was Sharknado. that was pretty amazing. Yeah, VR game. Yeah, yeah, and it was pretty cool. <laughs> so uh, so that was definitely a, a cool highlight of, of ours. 
happening. So I'm still sort of uh, maybe uh, privy to it just because we built it. You just had a little flash of like fear. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of cool games out there. Um, we really focus on the you know training side and immersive side. And you know, we got into a lot of touchless uh, technology as well, kind of thing using you know the Kinect, the Leaf, things like that. Um, we did some you know Hololens uh, work for the RCMP at Heritage Center there, so um, which is pretty cool. So it was all sort of happening, you know, 2015 to 2018, 19 kind of thing. So and, and during that time, or the last couple of years, if you want to say that's where we sort of changed our name, sort of about four or five years ago from Melcher. Media because we're not really a media company and we had been for a while, but you know, uh, changed it to Culture Studios, and then we really started to focus on our on our main pillar, right? So which we which we have today, which is you know our, our virtual reality development, uh, our gamified uh, gamification and learning, yeah, e-learning if you will kind of thing. So and um, you know some animation and modeling, which is just sort of needed in order to do the first two, if you will. And then our AR, uh, MR, uh, XR, uh, touchless sort of side of things. So that's really just immersive, um, you know, using devices, mobile devices, touchless technology, things like that, right? So you ever had a moment when you realized that like the technology you're developing will actually save lives on, say, a Saskatchewan highway or a, a truck driver that yeah has the train. Like that's got to be a moment of either pride for even your family or yeah, it's, it's, that it's, it's pretty mirror. cool kind of thing for sure. You know, we did some some nursing training and things like that. So you know, the fact that we can you know help train nurses better to you know save lives quicker, and things like that, is also a, a cool thing. So the nice thing about VR, which we we really loved, and was an early adaptation. Is you could put someone into a um, into a hostile environment where they could potentially uh, simulate as if they were getting hurt, seriously injured, or even you know death, if you will, and they'll feel that sensation, but they're actually not harmed, right? So it gives them so that real world experience. So and that's something we learned really early on in you know 2014-15 that uh, where where it could really you know open the doors, if you will, right? Now, For sure. Do you have a favorite project or like a favorite like uh, this is my uh, this is my number one? Yeah, you know, there's been a lot of them for sure. I wouldn't say we have a a very specific project, but one one project that really stood out was probably one of our very first peripherals, which was um, the development of the, uh, the the mobile simulator. It wasn't a VR one, but for the RCMP Heritage Center. So basically, the, the day in the life of a cadet uh, taking the training simulator. So they actually know from a full mobile simulator like a golf cart that you get in with a screen in front uh, that they could actually uh, drive around and simulate what, uh, what our CMP officer would do for, uh, for training. So that, that was a very fun project, uh, very, very cool to work on and, and kind of stood out, I guess. But there has been numerous, there's lots of different ones. So I think like I could probably just talk to you about VR in your company history for an hour. <laughs> I apologize. No, no, no. <laughs> um, talk about your pathways to how you started here. Yeah, um, we are going to come back and talk about the future and yeah. like the last couple of years, yeah. pandemic years. Yeah. Um, but can you tell me about Dwayne in high school? What were you sure. like? Were you were you sure. oh, were you in the computer science department? Yeah. You don't sure. seem like a nerd. That's why I ask. Yeah, for sure. Um, yes, yeah, so I was always into arts. So big into arts. Um, always big in three D. I was always like just passionate about the idea of, of, of animation and, and the three D aspect of it, not necessarily the two D, the classical side. Um, and even in high school, I took a, a multimedia course which involved doing some 3D work. So at the time, the lab was pretty advanced. We had access to the 3D software, so I actually made a 3D scheme. Um, we call it mini game video, if you will, kind of thing. If someone's skiing down a hill, kind of thing. So, so that's what really turned me on to it. And then, you know, a lot of, you know, arts, uh, traditional art, things like that. I was, I was a painter and stuff. So it's really into the multimedia side, for sure. To me, into the video game size, as most, most kids was during during that era, right? The the uh, the late 90s kind of thing was a, was a big, big sort of push on the, uh, the gaming front, kind of thing with consoles and stuff like that. So, so sort of those all together sort of drove what I wanted to do. And, at the time as well as becoming a big a big deal because of um, some of the 3d stuff that's happening with you know pixar and that at the time uh the movie business the industry as well was was lifting off and you know late 90s early 2000s so all that sort of couple of me wanting to go into that and a lot more schools were starting to offer this so yeah i mean it's it's hard to believe but i, I do blame a lot of disney and pixar and what they did to the industry of yeah. if you think a multi-million dollar video yeah the movie yeah. was a cartoon yeah but I don't know if it was Toy Story or Shrek, one of the first ones that made you go, oh, they animated this? Yeah. 
And yeah, I could see how to a young brain that's like, I yeah. want to do that. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. So right did now. you go right into school right after high school? I did. Yes. Yeah. So I did kind of like, so I got accepted at a few different schools across Canada. And um, the one that stood out actually is the one I went to here called New Media Campus. It was in Regina and Saskatoon at the time. New it's Media kind of Campus? New Media Campus, yeah. And I had, um, uh, I had family actually lived in Saskatoon at the time, kind of thing. So I flew out, took a tour of the school. I uh, really liked what they were doing. They were really focusing hands on on uh, using Maya and, um, and getting into the, sort of the, the 3D space and, and that sort of thing. So it was really cool. Um, and then I ended up, um, Another guy went to the same school from, from where I grew up uh, in, in Regina here. He had actually family here. So um, so we decided to come to Regina. So both of us moved out here and went to school here. And that's where we met a couple of people who actually work in my uh, company. Where did you today. say? I grew up in Ontario. So No yeah. way. We yeah. stole you from Ontario? Yeah, we stole you from Ontario <laughs> kind of thing. So, yeah. Wow, so, I did not know that. That's really cool. Yeah, so I just wanted to get away, do something different kind of thing. So kind of coming to the center of the, the country was a cool idea at the time, I guess. So <laughs> yeah, so it's school here. Uh, I took schooling. Um, Jack was a repeater and he was actually in the same same uh, class as me kind of thing. So fine. And uh, we actually ended up having um, an industry night at the end to showcase our work. And I ended up getting hired um, by a company. So I got a job offer. So I went home for the- Right out of school. Yeah, right out of school. So I ended up- uh, going home for the summer and um, came back, um, got the job, and it was more in the web web design business. So that's why the hence the sort of getting into the web graphics side of business. We did a little bit of 3D work there, not a ton, but then ended up going, uh, you know, that's sort of what propelled me to uh, you know, come back here, if you will, stay in Regina, that's, Saskatchewan. But you got, I, I, I am like, as the student who would be terrified to go to those events. Yeah. You went yeah. and you got the job. Yeah. Like that's uh, to me like yeah. the Cinderella story from school. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah, it was pretty cool that way. Um, yeah, I met the, the owner at the time, and then when I came back, we had a further interview and you know, then started kind of things. So, yeah. yeah, so it was pretty pretty lucky that way. Maybe I mean not everyone got jobs. And then, and it's just the way it is in, in all sort yeah. of uh, walks of life. But I was lucky enough, so it really helped me for me because I got a job very closely related to what I took in school. Right. So when did you realize you wanted to do your own thing or wanted to do Melcher? Yeah, it was it was definitely a few years later for sure, right? So like right away you weren't no I want to do my not, own thing. No, not right away. It was just sort of enjoying having a job in the, in the space. Uh, I was also learning right out of school. You don't you don't necessarily get every single thing you need to know, right? So I was learning, you know, they don't teach you everything. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> but they do what is they a super job campus. Yeah. yeah. But they do, yeah. But they do help and you know, it's uh you know, we learned a lot and then time to my my wife, um my now wife was my girlfriend. Uh, she'd actually moved back from Calgary um, to take on um, an internship that was here. So, and then she had a one-year schooling left while I was working. So, she we were down by the university. Um, she took her last year here, just made sense kind of thing. So, stuff. So, we had some of that going on, and yeah, just enjoying life and that sort of thing. Uh, and now you have a family here. Yeah, now we have a family here. Yeah, uh, two kids and uh, two girls, about numbered. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so now, tell me about the future of uh, where you want. Melcher Studios to go. I when, and I would encourage you. Maybe at this point we'll we'll pan your uh, Instagram and just show because there's project after project after project that I'm like, this is cool. Yeah. This each project could sell in itself some other company to say, hey, we want to do that. Yeah. And so I'm very curious. Like, what's what's next? What's the future? Yeah. Our, our big push right now is 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 integrating our own sort of technology. We've really been developing our own distribution hub and platform for all of our. All of our content that we've made over the last couple of years, and some of our clients are to play on it already, and a lot more will be. And it does allow us to integrate um, more of our peripheral designs. So we have our own 3D printer, we have our own fabrication engineer that we've hired over the last couple of years. So you can actually build a good chunk of this stuff in house, integrate it, um, and allow for all the, the peripherals. So to be able to use your hands, you know, eliminating controllers, integrating with third party objects, things like that. So just Taking it one more level up and, and integrating, you know, that as a whole with, you know, more AI technology, so artificial intelligence, you know, self-awareness type driven uh, solutions. Kind of things. Is there anything you're working on or seeing coming out that people won't believe or it's going to be too good to be true? Um, you know, the one thing I think that uh, that's I'm really interested in, and I've done this for the last couple of years, I've sort of made my own holograms. Um, 
at Halloween on my garage door kind of thing. So the removal of my garage door, I guess, kind of thing. So oh, I think I think real, yeah. And obviously, it's you're using making your own. It's not just for Snoop Dogg yeah, anymore. Exactly right. <laughs> so uh, and obviously, it's, it's not to the production quality of uh, the studios, but. But you can uh, you can see where that's going. I think you know just you know even you know TVs removing the TVs just having you know full 360 holographic integration. I think I, I I think that's pretty cool and it's a new way to sort of showcase content which will be coming out kind of thing. So For sure. So that's sort of something cool to keep an eye on that that I'm uh, I'm sort of interested in kind of thing. So and, and that's the kind of cool thing about our business is within our studio. You know we have we have 15 employees, 15 people working here, partners, employees, and and all of them have sort of a niche idea or quality of what they like, new things that are happening, they're always on the lookout for what's what's happening, where things are going. So. Very cool. So it's a team approach, not just yeah, yeah, not exactly. just Dwayne's shoulders. Yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. So yeah. Tell me about <clears throat> last year when the pandemic hit. Yeah. Um, tell me how Melcher would now I assume for some of your stuff you can do remotely, but for some of this stuff I'm guessing you have to be here to do it. Some of it definitely helps. Um, at the time, uh, you know, we had a couple of big projects that we had, uh, we, we were still carrying over through the pandemic to finish off, get done until sort of close to the middle of summer. So we were sitting fairly good then. Uh, but then obviously, uh, you know, everyone basically shut down, right? Kind of thing. So yeah. that's sort of where we hit a wall there is, is sort of in the summer. Um, and then, you know, things have started to pick back up sort of in, in the fall here again, kind of thing. So, you know, it was just sort of a, uh, just unfortunately was it, it was what it was and uh, it was unfortunate. I think we fared um, quite a bit better than a lot of companies. Um, we still had our challenges, obviously, um, but uh, you know it's it's a tough place to be in, right? And you can just uh, all you can do is you know feel bad for for everyone and but you know keep trucking along and uh, you know things will things will get better. Yeah, right? there's, there's things about what you guys do like e-learning in my mind, like I, like. Your your door is going to be getting knocked on yeah. in the near future, I'm yeah. sure. Just because if we don't go back to the normal, yeah. like some of the stuff you're talking about, I'm like, I want to learn that way. Yeah, <laughs> I want to put the mask yeah. on. And <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, just just the evolution technology, like I mentioned. You know, even just with this, we can remove the you know the controllers now, where you can use your own hand. So that's obviously a hygienic thing. We do a lot of touchless solutions as well. So oh, cool. some of that stuff has been has been going on. I think the projects are, are there and we're there, but obviously. In some cases, for other companies, it was hard because they were hit either a financially or or b with manpower. The people weren't around, or sick, or off, or dealing with um, you know everyone's kids being home to and, and trying to juggle jobs and stuff like that. So some of those projects maybe weren't at the top of the mind. But as, as things sort of get back into a normal groove, if you will, and now that the vaccines are starting to get into arms, I think. I think it's going to continue to pick up and, and even exponentially start to pick up here over the next couple of months. As For things, sure. As things go. And a lot of those projects that maybe were postponed or delayed are starting to get uh, rehashed because everyone is realizing too that now is a great time to start working on some of that stuff so that when you know things do get back to normal, um, you know we can start getting you know headsets on people again a lot easier, uh, easier uh, if you will. Um, For you know, sure. They want to have their content ready, their their platforms ready, their solutions ready, so they can just go to market. Definitely. Yeah, I'm fascinated with where this goes and, and especially because we're not getting in a big room to learn anymore. Yeah. And if we want to learn together, yeah. you have a solution. Yeah, absolutely. And even just like, um, you know, some of our solutions, we have, a, we have a VR backpack. So you can actually walk up to five miles with a backpack on in, in any direction kind of thing and be in a full VR <laughs> environment. So, you know, you don't, you don't have to, you're not, you're not constrained to a room. It's like cold weather training for kids. Yeah, exactly. Oh my exactly. god. So yeah, put the backpack on and run. So yeah, <laughs> run away. So oh, yeah. too funny. Okay, well, the one question everyone always wants to know is, uh, what does your day to day look like? Do you have yeah. a morning routine? Do you yeah. is it come to the office, sit down, work for eight hours straight? Like, uh, tell me about what your yeah what day to day is like for you. Yeah, so for me it's definitely a little bit different. Um, as I'm more in the um, you know running the business role now and the management role, so I don't I don't do a lot of hands on development or work anymore so um so my day is definitely a lot different every day it's not the same routine um where we're you know i could be in client meetings i could be looking over accounts i could be um you know uh, reviewing where projects at i could be you know prior to this maybe having um, you know event to go to or showcasing stuff so my my day is, is very different um i do still try to come in the office as much as i can um, you know, we obviously use masks and stuff like that, and, and we have all the protocols in place to be, to be COVID friendly. 
Um, people don't generally just walk off the street to, to, to visit us. We are you know, a service-based, if you want to think about that, even though we have products for service-based, so people make appointments and stuff, or we can do a lot of it remotely. So we um, so don't have people coming off the street, so we're fairly safe that way as well. Um, but yeah, we sort of put in our time, and you know, as, as a business owner, um, you know, I definitely don't necessarily just work, you know, eight to five, you know, I work a lot of weekends and, and, and evenings and stuff too. So, but um, yeah, it, it could be any number of things. If, if, if you were in a more of a developer or animator or fabricator or engineer role, um, we do have, you know, anywhere from, you know, five to 10 projects on the go at a time. Uh, so you could be working on any number of projects um, and, you know, it could be either coding, animating, modeling, and meaning. Um, doing reviews, testing, that sort of thing. So, so, so there's there's a variety of, of different things that you might be experiencing as as an employee. Even if you're a coder, you might not always just be sitting there coding. <laughs> like, day, right? As somebody who gets bored easy, I'm like, that sounds awesome. Yeah. So if you're antsy in your chair, <laughs> yeah, fly yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, there's some different things to do, and um, you know, and even sometimes to the guys when we when we are, in, you know, uh, you know, crunch time and stuff like that for development, they. You might have to sit there for a bit and do some work, but there's always a way to, you know, really you can reprieve and stuff like that. And there's other things that need to get done in the company as well. So for sure, and, and you know, and sometimes too, just to give you an idea, you know, when we're working on some of our, um, you know, like our big game, we're, we're helping to work on Sharknado. You know, our guys would be in a headset for sometimes, you know, five, six, six hours a day. So they'd spend, you know, six hours a day virtually in a headset working, right? Kind of thing. So be immersed. Kind of thing. So, Too cool. Yeah, they were in a different reality, just like uh, Rudder put the Ready Player One. So. <laughs> I'm like, I should have, I should have had some references ready for that. My bad. Next yeah, up, uh, it's all good. Yeah. Um, if you could talk to yourself in high school, what advice would you give yourself? Yeah, I'd say definitely just to you know follow, follow your dream, follow your passion, and what you like, and, and definitely explore the opportunities out there. Um, you know, take a closer look to maybe what you want to maybe specifically do. What companies are doing that? Where you might like to work? What you like? What you might like to work on? I think so, Did, uh, were you ever discouraged early on when you were getting into a space that was, I, like to me, that no one was getting into three D animation? Yeah, yeah. Like, did you ever have a moment where, I, I don't know, maybe it's a conversation with yourself or your wife saying like, I don't know if there's a market here. I don't know yeah. what am I doing? No, I, I, don't, I don't think so, kind of thing. So um, I think it was always like, oh wow, this is going to be. Huge. Kind of thing. It was definitely the reverse with that because I think it might have just been time. Oh, because the adoption wasn't yeah. there. You knew it was gonna. Oh yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So, so I was a little bit lucky that way, if you want to think of it, right? Where you know the adoption of what's what's trending moving forward, you know, this this the space can be really wide open, right? Kind of thing. So there's just so much, there's so much integration with uh, what we're doing, even from you know a, a training and immerse of a solution and marketing perspective that can be applied to so many other um, genres of business like, like health right and where it's going with ai and you know fa fabrication engineering manufacturing you know where it's going with um you know with, with, with self automation with um you know even um even looking at you know what you know machines to build machines and things like that right so well the fact that that, that ai is, it can perform a lot of things better than humans yeah. and i mean you think about a doctor performing a surgery with an AI saying, no, wrong one. Like, yeah. like to have that support? Yeah. I, like, I don't know if we're gonna go to the singularity just yet, but yeah. at one point. <laughs> yeah, it'll be sort of, you know, conducive in, you know, in your regular glasses, things like that, right? So, yeah, so there's just so many different places that it can be applied, right? So, even 3D printing, you know, we have a 3D printer and it's, it's pretty amazing. The things we can print, you know, um, you know, the ability to print organic material, right? To re reprint a muscle, for instance, if your muscle is dead, right, is pretty, Pretty awesome, right? Kind of thing. So. That's cool. That yeah. Cool. So, um, the other question I didn't ask is how much? How much do people make around here? Like, yeah. in the the three D animation or the development world, yeah. is it is it fun? So you don't pay people anything, or yeah. can students <laughs> expect to make a decent living? Yeah, yeah, you can definitely expect to make a decent living, kind of things. Uh, you know, for us, and what we gauge is your experience, what you can bring to the table, your ability to you know complete projects and. And up level projects. So it's really big on trying to up a level, so over over deliver for sure on, on what we do. Um, so that's obviously a key factor. And sometimes that does come with experience. Um, we do hire people straight out of school for sure. Um, we do have, a, a, I'd say, more senior staff overall though, because um, you know we are a smaller smaller company, right? Kind of so for sure. But but we still hire people, and we do have um, opportunity to um, you know do internships and things like that for people to learn. So awesome. Yeah.
Okay, well, if, if somebody wants to follow up or, or find Melcher, where can they find, connect with you guys? Yeah. I, I will, I think we have to show the Instagram because I, yeah. I love sure. how you're laying out your project. Sure. Where else would they get hold of you? Yeah, they just go to our website, uh, melcher.ca, so M-E-L-C-H-E-R.ca. So check out website there, so. too. Yeah. He's so, so good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but thanks so much. Honestly, uh, as somebody that's been in the market with you for years, it's cool to see where you guys have gone and I can honestly say I look up to you going through the yeah. projects you guys are working on and who you work with. Yeah. I'm just happy you're in my province, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. And just I just I had a moment when you're talking about the highways, the Saskatchewan moment of like, that's actually helping people. Yeah. This isn't you're not just creating VR moments, you know, as, as, not to downplay games. Yeah. But you're actually helping like lives in Saskatchewan, which yeah. to me is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but you should be able to go to bed smiling tonight. Yeah. You're like, oh, absolutely. No. I'm doing something. Yeah. You always appreciate it. I think I think our, our community in the technology sector is great in Saskatchewan. I think a lot of people are uh, are, are gaining the space and expanding that. And, and I and I really encourage more and more uh, you know, individuals across our province to share their story, talk about what they're doing, uh, and explore and explore you know, collaborations and stuff like that. So it's, you know, Saskatchewan just has some pretty cool tech stuff going on for sure. For sure. Yeah. Wicked games, eh? Yeah. Wicked games. <laughs> it's wicked. That was our bottom. <laughs>